good evening, Mr. and Mrs. North America, or wherever you may find yourself. I'm Silver Sterling, and are you ready for a mystery? Hexaco Motor Oils presents the Hexaco Mystery Radio Hour, sponsored by Hexaco. Tonight, we bring you tales from the gritty streets of Chicago with Gun for Hire. You know that feeling when you go to the circus and you watch the tightrope walker? That feeling in the pit of your stomach, that one slip and the dangerous balancing act is all over. Down she goes. Show over. You want her to make it across, but each step is an agony like learning the dame or Jake you love is stepping out to be in another's arms. In either case, you can't look away. And for Miles Pike, he walks his own tightrope, trying to balance his secret with his mission and with learning that something deeper might be going on. But for Miles, if he missteps, there's no net at the bottom of his fall. as my family has to keep from wearing the latest in bucket and concrete wingtips or becoming the butter some hitman wants to slot his hot knife through, you get pretty good at it. My father did it to pay for my med school tuition. I returned the favor to help Pops out when he was in a pinch. Hell, I even did it to give up my real name, to make my last name be a fish. My family's never had it easy, but we got it done. I cut a straight line incision to remove a doughboy's appendix while mortars hit less than a hundred yards away. I hit a low C on a tenor sax while lighting a dame's cigarette. But making the deal with the family, to keep an eye on the outfit, was trickier than getting backstage passes to see Louis Armstrong. But I pulled it off. It's what I do. The trick is knowing who to make the deal with. Any stiff with an angle will cut you packed, but if they don't have the cheese to back it up, then you back the wrong rat. And with Capone not around, that's the tricky part of this deal. Speaking of Satchmo, I was lucky enough to jam with Pops back when he did a secret show at Cafe Society in the Big Apple. Not bad for a great war medic turned mafia spy. So you took the body back last night. Go ahead and make me another healing roll. And I'm going to give you a plus two to this. One of those pluses is because you uh, are in your space. And the other one is because Gloria, who's a little bleary eyed uh, when she shows up. uh, Because she was woken up uh, late in the evening as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Is there as well. And she's assisting you. Okay. And so you get the body there and you're examining everything. Essentially, what you're able to determine is that this body was split open in the back by almost as if it was your brain doesn't want to necessarily believe this, but this is what the evidence uh, is telling you. It's almost as if it was like a a large uh, talon or claw did it. So there's like two, there's two distinct cut lines and they scraped along there and they scraped it through the the flesh and the muscle uh, right to where the ribs are. And though each rib uh, was essentially snapped and bent backwards uh, slightly before the lungs were scooped out and then pulled out of the body and then spread uh, aside. There is evidence of a lot of physical trauma on the front side of his body. 
Okay. About the the head and, and abdomen and whatnot, and so you're 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 finishing up uh, your exam and um, those cuts on the back. Mm-hmm. Is there any particle traces left in the flesh from whatever did it? Uh, let's see. You got you got a ten. Yes, you're able to find some some things there that are not that you can't easily identify as uh, bone or cartilage or any of that stuff and so it must be something that was left behind it's not metal though correct it is not metal all right i'll take those pieces out and examine them later miles what do you think that is i don't have enough information to say I I don't know. It looks like it's a giant claw. Yeah, but that doesn't make that doesn't make any sense though. Giant claw, that just seems that just seems uh fantastical. It's what it looks like. Yeah. I won't know until I examine this a little more. Alright, alright. Did they did they wake you up? I mean, or were you already awake? I was awake. Oh. It's, you're up awfully late. No. Nature of the business sometimes. Yeah, I suppose. I suppose. I was sound asleep, and all of a sudden, boom, 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 you know, on my door. Yeah, I'm, I'm awake now, though. Oh, here. Here's that. Here's the spreader for you. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. All right, let's... <sighs> Did you know this guy? I don't remember ever seeing him. Nah. No, no, nothing about him. He's one of O'Reilly's guys. So I've been told. Yeah, you don't think it was, uh, I mean, I've been kind of hearing some things. You don't think it, you don't think that there's, they're like going to start like a power struggle kind of thing, do you? <sighs> if they were, they wouldn't do it like this. Well, I don't know. I mean, that's kind of, you. the way that you found them, that, they, that you said you found them, that just seems kind of. I mean, that kind of intimidating, right? I suppose. Yeah. Mm. But if they were actually going to start a war, they wouldn't do it like this. It would be with bullets. Yeah. Well, you think they would just be more direct? It's the nature of these people. Mm, yeah. I suppose. Mm. Um, if you don't need me for anything more, then I, I, I can... I mean, we're about done here, right? Yeah. If you want to head out. Okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna, I'll go back and I'll grab a few hours and stuff, but uh, um, I got nothing planned for during the day tomorrow. I was going to do a little shopping. You know, you can just tell them to call me or stop by. Yeah, you go ahead. Do your shopping if you need to. We're pretty much done here. Okay. Okay. Have a good rest of your night, Miles. You probably should try and get some sleep if you were already awake when they came and got you. It's going to be daylight soon. Yeah, we'll, we'll get some. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Gloria leaves. Exam-wise, what more do you uh, want to or feel you need to accomplish? I want to make sure any organs, see if there's any missing organs. There is a missing organ, but go ahead. Yeah, I figured as much. Yeah, and then I'm going to see if I can examine the pieces of I found in the uh, in the tears see if I can try to figure out what it is. The organ that is missing is his heart. You're, you're starting to examine this and you're running a piece of the fragment on the microphone, on the microphone, microscope. You're trying to focus uh, in on that and really see what it is and you find yourself just getting, it's getting harder to focus and you're, you're getting, you're getting kind of tired. Um, and you can just, you can start to feel the fatigue kind of set in. All right. I assume I have some sort of cot or yes. yeah. place I can crash here. All right. All right. I will lock everything up and uh, sack out for a couple hours. All right. Give me a uh, spirit roll. That'll work. That will work. You sleep pretty well. You do have a few disturbing dreams the nature of them kind of they, they, they fluctuate a little bit but there's a consistent theme where you feel like you're being chased and you can't get a good 
glimpse of what it is that you're um, being chased by. When you do take the time, you know for sure, when you do take the time to look uh, at what is chasing you, it's always blurry and kind of lost a bit in um, either shadows um, or darkness, or you can't see it, but you can feel it uh, closing in on you. But you don't necessarily feel a lot of fear while this is happening, uh, but there is it's more concern than anything else as opposed okay. to any sort of dread or anything. Uh, but you wake up uh, a few hours later. Is the body still there? Uh, the body is still there. The door to your uh, your office, your exam room, whatever, opens, and it's uh, it's O'Reilly himself, and he's flanked by a couple of lieutenants. Goodness. Comes walking up to you. Good morning. Sir. How are we this morning? We're tired, but I might have some answers for you. Oh, it's, uh, it's good to hear. I appreciate you uh, getting up. Uh, taking a look at this for me. It's very kind of you to do that. I uh, was told that uh, you were a bit uh, preoccupied, but I appreciate it nonetheless. Family comes first. Family comes first. Yes, that's good. It's it's sad. It's sad what happened to him, huh? Yeah. What can you uh, what can you tell me? <sighs> it's gonna sound odd, sir, but there wasn't anything natural about how he died. This wasn't by weapon I don't even think it was done by human this is animal hmm. maybe large cat animal but I mean he kind of points to me and says I mean those tears in his skin yeah that's a big animal that's like a that's like a bear there's no bears here in Chicago that's no I mean there's they there's got the, they got the bears at the zoo but one other thing like a mountain lion I don't know yet I haven't been able to examine the pieces I pulled out of the tear. His heart's missing. Uh, I'm sorry, but Whatever tore him open took his heart. He just, like, like took his heart and that was it? Like, ate it? Well, I don't know what it did with it, but the heart's no longer there. And this is more information that you got, Miles. Whether or not you want to convey it is up to you. But you noticed from your exam that the heart was relatively neatly removed. It wasn't pulled out. It was sliced out. It was from behind. Like the lungs were taken out and then whatever went in there and then removed the heart. So, but, okay, so you don't know. But, they, but it took the heart and, and maybe ate it or something have no idea like I said the heart's gone that's all I know he uh he gives a, a slideways glance to both of his lieutenants all right all right this wasn't done by a human so I don't think this is <sighs> okay so hold on hold on hold on here doc he holds up his hand you're telling me, okay, not done by a human, meaning like done by like an animal of some sort. Some sort of, some sort of big cat, like you said. That's what it looks like. All right. Okay. All right. All right. But why it would go through the back, pull the lungs out, and then go for the heart, I can't answer that. Right. All right. What do you what do you what do you need for me to help you answer that question? Do you need anything for me to help you answer that question, or is this a question that we're just not going to know the answer to? I just need time. I'm going to need time to examine the fragments I got. All right. Well, you got your time. You got your time. That's fine. That's fine. Have you told any? Hey, what about your nurse lady? Where is she? What's going on with her? Is she here? Gloria. She went to sack out. Okay. Okay. So she she's, knows. She's cool. Yeah. All right. She's. Can we trust her? Yeah, she's good. She's good. Okay. Miles. Yeah. Can I trust you? You can always trust me. You know that. Let me tell you something, Miles, and I'm not I, this is no disrespect for you. And he he begins kind of pacing around the room. He says, "We got to, there's some things going on here that um, you know, some people aren't necessarily always privy to. You know what I mean?" I know what you mean. 
okay, well, so ever since Al, you know, went off to prison, I mean, he's still kind of running things. He's sending messages back and forth, and that's fine. But sometimes, you know, he pauses for a bit, and he's walking around, he's rubbing his chin. He says, Miles, look, um, you know, you've heard the phrase, cats away, the mice will play. You've heard that phrase, yeah? I've heard it. Okay, all right. And you kind of know what that means, right? I do. Okay. What I'm talking about here is is that, um, you know, the cat is away right now. And, and we want to make sure that m- a lot of mice don't start playing around. You know what I mean? Miles, do you know what I mean? I don't know what you mean. Okay. All right. That, you know what? I kind of like that answer. You kind of just do your job, don't you, Miles? You kind of just do the things that you do right back here, right? I do what I'm asked to by the family. And that's all I do. And Miles, you know what? That's all we ask you to do. We set you up here with this nice setup that you got. We feed you. We give you some money when you need it for your things. We we don't mind about your your habits that you have, you know? We like your music, you know? Okay? All right? So I think what you say there, Miles, is probably the best way to go from this point forward. And 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 look, you're probably going to have other people come and talk to you about, you know, playing and being mice and doing things, you know. But I think your approach here, Miles, is probably a good, a good safe approach. You know what I mean? I appreciate that, sir. Yeah, well, you're very welcome. And let me tell you something. I'm going to handle this, and he points over to points over to him he was one of my guys i'm gonna take care of this if anybody from any of the other guys comes around if anybody of obanion's guys comes around or if anybody of from degrassi's guys comes around and asks you you know what was all this stuff that you had to do from one of o'reilly's guys i know nothing you know what yeah yeah this is this is me and you handling this here right you got it boss okay all right that's good i'm glad that we have this understanding um now, I know I said that you got all the time you need, but I want to I want to do right by, you know, I want to do right by him and his family. So we're going to have to, you know, in about a day or so, okay? I'll give you what I can. All right. And then we got to take take the uh take the body. Understood. Okay. All right. Good. We cool? Oh. Oh. Miles, we're we're very cool. This is a good talk you and I have had. I appreciate that, sir. Mm. I appreciate that as well. He reaches into his his uh, his breast pocket and pulls out a gun and shoots me. Pulls out a gun, shoots you in the face. There we go. And Game over. There we go. Good night, guys. Well done. You get, I'll give you one more Benny, even though it won't matter because you're dead. But hey, he uh, pulls out pulls out a pocket watch. And he looks at it, and it's got a nice little silver chain. And he hands you this pocket watch. And he says, this this pocket watch here. I think that you and I have made a connection in regards to this whole situation. To show my appreciation, I want to give this to you, Miles. And he hands you this pocket watch, this cherished gift. And he says, "Um, my uncle gave this to me. Um, after uh, I handled something for him back in Ireland, you know. I took care of some things for him there. He gave this to me as a sign of his trust and belief in me and a way to say thank you. And I want you to have this, and I want you to have all the responsibilities and everything that go along with having this. Understood. I thank you. That's very generous of you. Yeah, 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 it is. And I'm glad that you recognize that. That's good. That's good. Okay. Look, you got your day. We'll come and take care of it. There we go. Done. Done. You take care of yourself, Miles. You too, sir. Thank you. Let's go, man. And they turn around and they leave. <sighs> <laughs> Oh, there is one thing he actually, he also does hand you. I forgot. I actually, I was going to have him give this to you as well. Mm. 
one of his guys produces a um, a large manila envelope, and he says, uh, "It's part of your examination, just in case you needed it. I had some of my guys take some photos last night in case you want to take a look at any other things if you need some help with that." That would be great. So here, these are the photos they took. Um, you know, you uh, you go ahead, do with them what you need. You just hang on to them, and we'll get them back when we need to. Okay. Thank you. All right. Now we're going to go. And uh, they leave. I'll take a look at the pictures. Um, You're starting to flip through the pictures. And sure enough, it looks just like you saw, you know, last night. You see the uh, the body. It's laid out that way. It's And there's photos are, are from a bunch of different angles. And you see the splotches of blood. As you're looking through them, there's a knock on your other door, essentially the the business end of the uh, of the door. And well, let me ask you: uh, Do Irving and Miles, do you guys have a coded knock that you guys use since you are war buddies and whatnot? I, I haven't come up with one. Let's say we do. Sure. Let's say we do. I don't see why not. There you go. Yeah, I mean, I'm assuming I'm assuming that that Irving has a general idea of who Miles works for, um, in the sense being a back alley surgeon, that kind of thing. Uh, I, I think with uh, Irving's connections, he would know if Miles hasn't told him directly. Okay. All right. So yeah. So a coded knock essentially makes sense in this in this regard. So. Uh, so yes, yeah, so the the Irving coated knock hits the uh, hits the door. All right. Um, I will put the pictures away, and uh, I'm going to make an assumption here, Chris, that the examination area where the body is is separate from the office area. Um, you can, there, well, it's separated by, we'll put it uh, separated by a curtain. So it's, it's, it's an open space, but you can pull a curtain right. around that yeah, way. Yeah, let's do that. And I'll throw a sheet over the body too. Cool. And then right. go open the door. Miles, how are you this fine morning? Irving, what up? You look a little tired. I'm exhausted. Really? I've been up all night. You've been up part. all night. Well, that answers one of the questions I had. Uh-oh. And what questions are those? Yeah, Irving kind of looks back. Can can I come in? Yeah. Come on in. Okay. Were you doing some secret work? Yeah, you could say that. Okay. I, I won't ask any questions. I'll be... I'll, Appreciate it. Yeah. So you, you slept okay last night? No. 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 You don't know what you didn't sleep at all. You said sorry. I. Uh... Well, I cut a few hours here, but. You uh, you didn't hear anything about anyone else just. Kind of sleeping too much, did you? Nope. No. No. So do you know? Uh. So I had a. Uh... It's kind of weird. No. <laughs> okay. I. But uh, I didn't. I don't remember anything a lot of last night. <laughs> what was her name? I was I was developing photographs last night. Okay. Sure. Is that what the, they call it these days? Ha ha ha! You got mm. me. No, no, no. What did you find? What photographs? Well, you know, I you remember I talked about that uh, the back alley, the alley killer. Yeah. And I got, I think I got some photos of. Them. I was developing those last night. Ah. And uh, they're interesting. I haven't gotten into uh, the uh, other set I've got. Did you? Let me ask you, Irving. When you went. Um... When you got up this morning, did you go into back into the dark room? No, I made a spirit roll earlier, and uh, Irving was so unnerved that he immediately had to Miles' office because he doesn't just drop out like that. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. 
so so I uh, I was developing them and I walked out of my of my uh, dark room and then it was like I blinked and I was waking up and it was almost twelve hours later. I was in bed. Too many chemicals. Now I, I wasn't. I wasn't drinking or anything. I don't have the money for that. No, from your developer. Your developer chemicals. Think they might have done something? The fumes from those things. You'd you think it would have happened before now. I mean, it's not like I was doing anything different from what I normally do. Strictly medically speaking, your body could have finally reached its tolerance. You've been sucking this stuff down for a while, Irving. All right, all right, all right. The, the, the other thing is... You haven't had it. Why? You think there's something else? I saw some things, okay? And now you're gonna just gonna say, oh, they're hallucinations from the chemicals. Yes, I can hear that already. Well, <laughs> no, no. Believe me, after last night, I don't take anything for granted. What did you see? Well, see, so I took pictures of this, uh, this, this alley killer. And okay. they're, they're blurry, you know, because you know, it doesn't have it handle movement very well. And he was constantly moving. Yeah, and, yeah. I, when I first looked, you know, he's kind of, it looks like he's moving on on all fours. That's weird, right? It's kind of weird. And I was like, well, you Go know, on. maybe, maybe I just got him at the wrong time and he slipped or something. It can happen. It was, it was snow, it's snowing. And, uh, and then I, I swear one of the pictures has fangs. It's the clearest part of the picture. Makes no sense. But that's not what got me. You'd be surprised. I, I left. I, I, I stepped out for a little bit because, you know, I had to refill my water. I got everything. I go back in, and I swear one of the photos had glowing eyes. So it, it, it freaked me out a little. So, I you know, I kind of I I, 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 I may, I may have fell. I, 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 it, you know, it's kind of kind of cramped in there. And, uh... So I, I, and it's, I, then that's about the time, you know, I, I hung, I put the photo back. And I just like, I just need a breath of fresh air. That's it. And I stepped out and then it was morning. Can I uh, trust you? You saved my life. I trust you. You can trust me. I mean, really trust. Nothing goes beyond this room unless we decide it goes beyond this room. All right, I give you my promise. Come like, come look at this. I'll take Irving behind the curtain. Do I need to make a... Sp well, wait. Oh, yeah, there's a sheet covering it. <laughs> yeah, just wait, because there's a sheet covering. How do you have... I mean, obviously the body is not going to be displayed the way it was when you found it. No, in, no. But so how do you have it... Um, I still have it face down with the... With the back open? Okay. Yep. All right. How's your uh, How's your stomach? I haven't eaten anything. I mean, a strong stomach this morning. Be good. Rip the sheet back. Make me a uh, a fear check there, Irving. Oh no, <laughs> Irving's already a little freaked out this morning. So apparently, he can't handle this either. You don't uh, throw up per se, but you definitely you definitely feel a kind of a. There's a bucket over there. No, 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 no. I, I, it, it's just uh, my nerves, my nerves. It's just my nerves, all right? Just give me a second. This kind of walks around a little bit. I've seen this before. It's fine. It's fine. I can do this. Uh-huh. So you got a dead guy. So? Think those could have been done by fangs? Or a claw beast that has fangs? Well, I was going to ask, can I remember, remember the stabbing in the photo? Uh, yes. Could I make out whether it was a stab in the back or the front? And I was going to say, I could probably tell if you have the pictures. I do not. That's the thing. Uh, make me a smart roll. What a five. It appears that it was a stab in the back. All right, I'm giving you a little scoop here. So, when I was developing my photos that, uh, last night, I also noticed that there was a stabbing in one of the windows of the photos. What luck, right? 
a stabbing in one of the windows? Yes, like I could see two people in a window, and one of them was getting stabbed in the back. Okay. By what? I, I don't know. It was in a window. It was kind of shady. I couldn't really tell. This was over in the area of... And I'm going to give them the location I was in when I, uh... Um... When I found the Valley Killer and took the photos and all that. And... Is, is that anywhere near where you found... Him? It's in the neighborhood. Ish. Yeah. It's plausible that... I mean, there's still a whole lot of unanswered things here, but it certainly is plausible that whatever... It's something a body could probably have been taken to some a location like that. You don't think this was the Alley Cat Killer, do you? <sighs> I don't know. So, wait, you think this was made by... A claw? Did you say claws? I don't know if I did, but it certainly could be. It wasn't metal. You know, I tried to kind of forget it, and I thought it was just coincidence, but when I was chasing the Alley Cat Killer, or actually, more, actually it was more when I was leaving after chasing him, I noticed there were really big animal prints in the ground where I had been chasing him. I don't know if, I don't know if he made it, or if it was like, uh, it just happened to be there, you know? And I just happened to see it, but... I want to see these photos you got of this. Alright. Alright, I can go... I can do that. Speaking of photos, are you going to show... Uh, are you going to show Irving the photos that were taken of this guy? Yeah. See if you can uh, see anything here I'm missing. Alright. Alright. I can do that. I can do that. Just let me... Uh, just let me sit down for a second. I'm just... Oh. Chairs over there. Did you have to oh, did you have to take the the, the cover off like that? I mean, yeah, of course on. I did. It's... Ah. All right, all right. I don't know. I'm going to sit down and look at those. You start looking through the photos. Make me a fear check, first of all, uh, Irving. Ah, five. How does one make a fear check? Uh, that would be a spirit roll. So I, I, saw the, I saw the body live. The photos are okay. Yes, the the positioning of everything is definitely unnerving. The fact that it, you're seeing it through this artificialness of sorts uh, with the um, with the photos, it kind of takes away, uh, takes the edge off a little bit. So it's it's disturbing, but it doesn't it doesn't cause you any any jitters. Um, now make me a notice check. Four. As you examine. And you're looking, you know, you're doing, you're, you're using your photographer's eye and you're kind of going, you know, looking at the photos a little closer here. And at one point you're like, hey, hey, hand me that, uh, hand me that uh, magnifying glass. And you start looking closer and you begin to notice that the splotches of blood, and it's a little bit tough to make out in some of these uh, photos because they're not necessarily the focal point of the, the image that's taken. You're beginning to think these aren't necessarily blood splotches. They're blood, and, and, and Miles certainly confirms that they're blood, but it appears that they are symbols of sorts and not blood splotches. I don't know how many uh, crime scenes you've actually been to, Miles. Not a lot of crime scenes, no. But uh, blood doesn't just... Blood just doesn't splatter and look like this. This is this is not natural. What do you mean it's not natural? It looks like they're shaped, like purposefully, you know, like dripped or smeared or whatever. I can't really tell with the photo. How the hell am I supposed to explain this? And now, some wondrous words of wisdom about products to make your life better. Roca Cola. Ah. Hot summer days bring the necessity for cool refreshment, and nothing quenches your summer thirst better than Roca Cola. You've tried other cola drinks, but they always fall flat. 
Now try the one that spirits you away to a land of refreshment. With our patented special secret formula, your thirst doesn't stand a ghost of a chance. It's the dark drink with a light taste that's sure to please, with extra carbonation to tickle the nose, while your other senses are treated to an almost otherworldly experience. It's the cola that's going to rock your world. It's Roca Cola. Available at all fine soda fountains. Try one, or hey, Manitou. I mean, make it two. Roca Cola. There's some things you should tell your boss and some things you probably shouldn't. And now that Miles got off that tightrope, looks like it's time to step out on another. Alright, that's enough for now. So shake a leg till next time. But just so we're clear, the part of Grace Gunn was played by Joe Rich, Irving Holt is played by Brad Smith, Miles Pike is played by Scott R. Nelson, Tommy Bam Bam Prue is played by Brent Rich, and the boss in charge of this clip joint is Chris Hussey. I'm E.I. Wick, and remember, taking a wooden nickel is less trouble than a ghost rock dime. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Hexaco Mystery Radio Hour. This game references the Savage Worlds game system, available from Pinnacle Entertainment Group at PEGINC.com. It is unofficial media content permitted under the Media Network Content Agreement. This content is not managed, approved, or endorsed by Pinnacle Entertainment Group. Certain portions of the materials used are the intellectual property of Pinnacle, and all rights are reserved. Savage Worlds, all related settings, and unique characters, locations, logos, and trademarks are copyrights of Pinnacle Entertainment Group. Leaving a 5-star review of this podcast not only helps everyone here at the Hexaco Mystery Radio Hour, it's also your civic duty. When doing so, please search for Fear the Boot Actual Play. Hexaco wants to remind you to make your car run like magic and always use great Hexaco products. Until next time, I'm Silver Sterling, reminding you to always keep one eye on the shadows. Thank you.